Hello history lovers and welcome back. England's Virgin Queen, Elizabeth I, died on the 24th of March 1603 and her cousin, King James VI of Scotland, inherited the throne to become King James I of England and VI of Scotland, uniting the two countries and would be the foundation for Great Britain and the United Kingdom. History portrays this succession as a peaceful transition and that James as the successor was a foregone conclusion. But what if I told you that Elizabeth had more heirs, who, arguably, may have had a better claim than James? Before we start, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and be sure to check out for my other videos which are uploaded every Monday at 4pm GMT. And on to the video. Who were Elizabeth I's heirs? King Henry VII and his wife and queen, Elizabeth of York, had four surviving children. Their eldest, Arthur, was Prince of Wales but died before he could ascend the throne. Upon King Henry VII's death, his only surviving son, Henry, succeeded him as King Henry VIII. King Henry VIII had three surviving legitimate children, Edward, Mary and Elizabeth. Edward would succeed his father as King Edward VI, he would die childless and would be succeeded 13 days later by his elder sister Mary. Mary would also be childless and upon her death, her younger sister Elizabeth would become Queen Elizabeth I. Queen Elizabeth would also not bear any children. So we need to look at King Henry VII and Queen Elizabeth of York's daughters, Mary and Margaret Tudor, for the possible heirs to the throne. The eldest daughter, Margaret, married King James IV of Scotland, with whom she had King James V, who succeeded his father on the Scottish throne. Margaret's son, King James V, would have one surviving child, Mary, who would become Queen Mary I of Scotland. She would also have one surviving child, her son, King James VI of Scotland, who ascended the throne upon his mother's abdication. However, Margaret's line doesn't stop there. Dowager Queen Margaret Tudor married Archibald Douglas after the death of her first husband, King James IV. With Archie, Margaret had a daughter also called Margaret. Margaret Douglas would go on to marry Matthew Stuart, the Earl of Lennox, with whom she had two sons, Henry and Charles Stuart. Henry would go on to marry Mary Queen of Scots and was the father of King James VI, while Charles married Elizabeth Cavendish and they had a daughter, Lady Arbella, or Arabella, Stuart. Mary Tudor, the youngest daughter, married the King of France, but they had no issue. Upon his death, Mary married her second husband, Charles Brandon, the Duke of Suffolk. With Brandon, Mary had two surviving daughters, Frances and Eleanor. Lady Frances married Henry Grey, and they had three surviving daughters. Jane, who ruled for 13 days between Edward and Mary, and was ultimately beheaded for treason. Catherine and Mary Grey. Mary Grey died childless, but Catherine wed Edward, also known as Ned Seymour, and they had two sons. Edward and Thomas Seymour. Mary Tudor's other daughter, Eleanor, married Henry Clifford, the Earl of Cumberland, and they had one surviving child, Margaret. Margaret went on to marry Henry Stanley, Earl of Derby, and they had two surviving children, Ferdinando and William Stanley. Both would go on to have children, but Williams would not be born before the Queen's death in 1603, and therefore we finish this family tree roundup with Ferdinando and Alice Spencer's children, Anne, Francis and Elizabeth Stanley. Obviously, I have just covered several generations and not all of these people were heirs to the throne, as several of them had predeceased the Queen, but it does allow you to see where their claim came from. If you strike off those who died before Queen Elizabeth I on the 24th of March 1603, you are left with King James the Sixth of Scotland, Lady Arbella Stuart, Edward Seymour, Thomas Seymour, Anne Stanley, Francis Stanley, Elizabeth Stanley, and William Stanley.
We will be discussing these heirs briefly, but what I want to know is, who would you like to have seen become monarch out of the eight that I have just listed? Or, who do you think would have done a better job than James? Let me know in the comment section down below. During her reign, Elizabeth was constantly plagued with possible claimants and people plotting for her successor. The most well known is, of course, Mary Queen of Scots. And as her actual successor, King James is the most well known of the bunch. Then there's Lady Arbella Stuart, who herself was the subject of plots, mainly engineered by her grandmothers Margaret Douglas and Bess of Hardwick, where the idea was for her to replace or succeed the Queen, that even James himself was wary when he took the throne. Queen Elizabeth I imprisoned Edward Seymour's mother, Lady Catherine Grey, and his father, Edward Ned Seymour, in the Tower of London, as his and his brother Thomas Seymour's births were seen as potential acts of treason, as their mother, Catherine, a Tudor princess, had unlawfully married and provided an heir. The Seymour brothers were declared illegitimate, and Edward's son, William Seymour, would eventually go on to marry Lady Arbella Stuart in a secret match that I'm sure went down wonderfully with King James. I got a bad feeling about this. Arbella was put under house arrest and William was sent to the Tower of London for their shady dealings. If you don't want it to look like an attempt to seize the crown, then it's probably not best to marry someone who is also in line for that said crown in secret. And then there are the Stanley heirs, that to be honest, most people wouldn't think about and they seem to have kept their heads down compared to the others. Ferdinando had died before the Queen, so his claim passes on to his daughters Anne, Frances and Elizabeth. Frances, the middle daughter, seemed to have married well. Her mother Alice married Thomas Egerton, and Frances got to marry her stepbrother, John Egerton, Earl of Bridgewater. Frances was thought to be very pious, and a great lover of the arts and literature, to the extent of building her own library. Elizabeth Stanley married Henry Hastings, the Earl of Huntingdon, and she seemed to have been very involved in politics, sometimes speaking on the behalf of her husband to gain favour with the King and the Privy Council, and like her two sisters, enjoyed literature. Anne, the eldest daughter, seemed to have had an interesting life. In the same year that her sister Elizabeth married, so 1601, Queen Elizabeth I held discussions with the Muscovy Empire for a marriage between Anne Stanley and the Prince of Muscovy. This seems fitting as at one point she was being considered the rightful Queen of England, according to Henry VIII's will, but ultimately this marriage negotiation fell through. She then married Grey Bridges, they had six children and seemed happy although little was known about their daily life. But Grey would die in 1621, and second marriage to Mervyn <laughs> Touche, Touche, Touche. <sighs> and second marriage to Mervyn Touche, Earl of Castlehaven, however, would prove how incredibly strong she was. Anne was raped by her husband and another man, and had the strength to testify against the two men, and they were charged. I think had she been queen, she could have been just as glorious as good Queen Bess herself. Then finally there's William Stanley, the uncle to Anne, Francis and Elizabeth. He did have children, but as I said earlier, not until after Elizabeth had died. So he is the claimant for his line. So, who should have ruled after Elizabeth? Well, according to the will of King Henry VIII, after Elizabeth, if she had no children, it should go to the heirs of his youngest sister, Mary, at which point Edward Seymour should have been King of England after Elizabeth I. His claim would have been supported further by King Edward VI, devised for the succession, that narrowed it even further, specifying that it should be the Lady Jane and her heirs male, and then the Lady Catherine Grey, Edward's mother. So if we follow this logic, the line of succession should have been Edward Seymour, Thomas Seymour, Anne Stanley, Francis Stanley, Elizabeth Stanley, William Stanley, 
King James VI and then Lady Arbella. However, according to Queen Elizabeth I, Catherine Grey and Ned Seymour's marriage was invalid and the Seymour brothers are illegitimate, at which point Anne Stanley should have been Queen of England after Elizabeth. However, Henry's will wasn't signed by his hand, it was signed by a dry stamp, which caused its legality to be debated. At which point we follow the classic line of succession and go through Margaret Tudor's line as she was the eldest of the two sisters. And at which point King James VI was the true heir, followed by his children obviously, and then out of the eight that we discussed earlier after James, it would be Lady Arbella Stuart. I can see why Elizabeth did what she did. The whole thing gets very complicated and very messy. And also James had been ruling in Scotland just fine. So she knew that she'd be handing her country over to someone who wouldn't lose it in 13 days, Jane. Anyway, that was a quick look at the eight heirs to the throne of Queen Elizabeth I. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and let me know if you want to know about the Stanley sisters. If you do, I will add it to my list. If you want to check out more of my videos, then why not check out one of the five videos I have on Queen Elizabeth I. Until the next one, have a wonderful day.